This is Star Television on Channel 21. Welcome to the National News Bulletin. First, let's have a look at the headlines. Civil society movement Sierra Leone, in collaboration with Labour Congress and other partners, commemorates the May 8, 2000 massacre of 22 Sierra Leoneans by the AUF with the theme Sustainable Peace and National Cohesion through Inclusive and Social Justice. To lead the march, to say enough is enough. The West African Network for Peace Building Sierra Leone celebrates 20 years anniversary of peace building, a day set aside for reflecting into the past and to examine the current state of peace building and stability in the country. We are what we call the Many Peace Building Network. That's why it's looking at all those issues affecting women. Either the Ignition Hour Career Development has engaged students and young people in a two-day training at Rabi College, University of Sierra Leone. That is, that we box, let's say, around social entrepreneurship. The Eternal Ministry has celebrates its one-year anniversary at Hamilton CC Drive in Freetown. In entertainment news, a website for Sierra Leonean songs has been launched by Joshua Muliba, a Sierra Leonean entertainer, popularly called Salon Bobo. The first time I spoke with banking, I was like, banking, I'm having a project I'm working on. And in sports, football stakeholders in the western area will kickstart its annual female championship across the country with 32 teams taking part in the competition. Of party all over the country. What else on the country? All these making the headlines. And now for the news in detail with me, Leonora Jawara. Civil society movement Sierra Leone, in collaboration with Labour Congress and other partners, commemorates the May 8, 2000 massacre of 22 Sierra Leoneans by the AUF with the theme Sustainable Peace and National Cohesion through Inclusive and Social Justice at the Sierra Leone Labour Congress Conference Room in Freetown. Admaya Samai takes up the story. The May 8, 2000 tragedy, according to the National Coordinator of Civil Society Movement Sierra Leone, Juliet Anderson, said on the day in question, the civil society movement, in collaboration with the Parliament of Sierra Leone, organized a peaceful march of Sierra Leoneans from all walks of life in free to appeal to the RUF labor leader, the late Corporal Fode Sanko, to give peace a chance after signing of the Lomi Peace Accord. She further stated that what was meant to be a peaceful march ended up in a brutal massacre of innocent Sierra Unions by the RUF. We collaborate with parliament and other partners to organize the march to the late Corporal Seban Asako to give peace a chance after the signing of the Lome Peace Accord, which, at, which was acclaimed by all Sierra Unions. You know, the Lome Peace Accord, for us in the civil society, it's a novelty, and I think we must uphold it. People from all walks of life, in, in fact, about 30 people from the civil society, from Labour Congress and other institutions, went to Lome to sign a peace accord, and also the Interreligious Council. The president of the Sierra Leone Labour Congress, Janice Wright, while giving a statement, said the day is a special day for the people of Sierra Leone and not political day, which on the 8th of May 2000, civil society movement, Sierra Leone Labour Congress and others led the march to say enough is enough and call on the government to do something for the 22 souls that lost their lives that day. The Sierra Leone Labour Congress to lead the march to say enough is enough and that democracy and good governance must stand the test of time in Sierra Leone. And we should take this as our own key 
and him the death of the 22 people should be our business, all Sierra Leoneans' business. We are very lucky to be in this region. If you look at the world today, there are conflicts which is very difficult to handle. Let us see what we can do as the Reunions to rally now the civil society Sierra Reverend Jibila Kagbo from the National Commission for Democracy said for democracy to work, it has to have a link with the people and those who died on that day are important as those who died during the war. We must end the history and work very hard to make Sierra Leone a better place. For Star TV News in Freetown, I am Adma Samai reporting. Now, the West African Network for Peace Building Sierra Leone celebrates 20 years anniversary of peace building, a day set aside for reflecting into the past and to examine the current state of peace building and stability in the country. Let's have more in this report. Speaking during the event, the National Network Coordinator, Dr. Aisata Mahoy, in her welcome remarks said, the purpose and objective of the symposium is to discuss on what is missing or what are those things that we as Sierra Leoneans are required of us to do and the direction we are taking as a nation. But, um, 20 years of peace building practices has not been easy. And then 58 years of independence, the theme says, where have we been? Where are we now? And where are we heading to? This evening, we are here to discuss this great, important occasion on what is it that we are missing or what are those things that we should do as Sierra Unions that will lead us from the position where we are today and lead us to a better tomorrow. In the 90s, there was war in Liberia and also in Sierra Leone. So two famous gentlemen, one who is among us today, thought about the idea of setting up an organization that they think would be able to bring peace in the African region. So these two individuals tried to establish what we call one egg. And today, one egg is found in all 15 West African states. And what do we do in all these 15 of West African states? Basically, we have four thematic areas. We have what we call early warning and early response mechanism. We have what we call women in peace building network. That's what is looking at all those issues affecting women, either democratic governance issues, peace and security issues, so that uh, issues of women will be tailored accordingly. A county representative of the UN Women, Dr. Mary Okumu, said peace is not a thing that we can decide to will. Now we want it, now we don't want it. Peace is a combination of many things, a value and process that will bring people together. Peace is not a thing that we can decide to will. Now we want it, now we don't want it. Peace is a combination of many things. It is a value. It is a process and a set of many norms and actions taken or not taken. Those actions taken or not taken can result in peaceful or in conflict situations. So peace must be a desired value by everybody. It, it doesn't belong to some domain to decide, ah, we want peace or we don't want peace. Every single one of us must want and deliberately and intentionally will peace. 
as a value. The United Nations defines peace as more than just the absence of war or conflict and stresses the need for concerted efforts to achieve the common vision of a life of dignity and well-being for all. The founder and executive director of West Africa Network for Peace Building in West Africa, WANEP, Dr. Samuel Do said being a sustainable peace in a nation is the most established process of saving a generation from the activities of war. Building and sustaining peace is the residential of the United Nations. The founding fathers underlined in the UN Charter that it is to establish, it was established to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. But the late Secretary General Kofi Annan quotes it even better when he said, I quote, a forum was created the United Nations, where all nations could join forces. The Ignition Archie Area Development, as on the 3rd and 4th of May 2019, held a two day training for students and young people at Rabi College Campus, University of Sierra Leone. Nakama Slingo has the details and she now reports. Development has held a two-day training for students and young people at the Fobe College campus on the 3rd and 4th of May 2019. Madam Amina Taken Blady, the CEO of Ignatian RTV program said the program will help young people and college students develop their skills in social entrepreneurship adding that their aim and purpose is to help young people to be more equipped to be able to face the outer world challenges. Insa. This training that we organize as part of the Ignition Hour program. Um, as Fatou have said, some of you are familiar with the Ignition Hour, which is a monthly TV show that is that revolves, let's say, around social entrepreneurship. So what we're trying to do with the Ignition Hour is to develop a platform that helps young people and college students develop their skills in social entrepreneurship. So we know that it's very important for young people to have the exposure to ideas and initiatives. But uh, after we started that, we realized that um, it needs to be coupled with, um, let's say, the development of skills for young people. So we created, we, we, we started this quarterly uh, career development courses to help young people have skills in the four areas that you are going to be trained in during the two days, which is planning, communication, leadership, and personal and professional development that are key to your careers as um, entrepreneurs or as professionals. So that is the two, second component of the Ignition Hour program. The third one being the uh, call for proposals that we uh, organize after the season, when we finish with one season of Ignition Hour, so that young people can also uh, come in with their proposals on the various topics that we have uh, tackled during the season. And then we would help in uh, technical assistance by while you're still watching the news bulletin here on Star TV, now the Eternal Life Ministry has on Sunday, 6th May 2019, celebrated its one-year anniversary at Hamilton CC Drive in Freetown. Obai Kaloko has more. Giving a brief background of the church, the Apostle Eternal Life Ministry, Wilmot August Adeola, had said Eternal Life Ministry started with nothing and they suffer a lot with the church. But as it is stated in the Bible, seeking first the kingdom of God and all other things shall be added unto you. By the grace of God, all other things have been added unto you. They have been able to achieve their goal by celebrating their one year anniversary. When they keep serving, they turn water, they, 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 they plates, wood inside the church. We get the video to that effect. I mean, wish I get project talk for sure that for some of we may think that when you go through tough time, God not in the No matter what you go through, open on God. I look that place, say, the embarrassment. It takes three years at the bed for being back, but I'm not able. 
They see now which man they now they stop. Not to which man. When money pay, you they conquer which man. <laughs> this church where we sit down inside so we feel like two months, two weeks. Two months, two weeks. I want to encourage you. God is the way maker. And I have worked with him. That's why a few months back I celebrated 22 years working with God in mercies and in grace and in mercy. Are you with me? There is no child, there is no man who will make a mistake when you work out with God or with the Father God. You will make him. But the one thing you forget, faith in God for complete in you. A representative from Media One Center, Star TV, Ezekiel Fever Kagbo, commended Internal Life Ministry for their one-year anniversary celebration, adding that, as a media institution, they believe in entertainment in the religion and the soon-to-be hosted. We deal with Internal Life. We, an institution, we have the, the good for integrity and also professionalism. Um, on behalf of Star Television, I want to say we congratulate Internal Life for celebrating a wonderful day today. We all know for coming to ministry is not an easy thing. It's a thing where you get for left home. Just like to be chairman, we talk about giving yourself and commitment to Christ. You never get all. But thank God for God give a young man a vision. For a young man that operates as a pastor, that he will get a lot of risky things. He get a lot of things that we involved. Well, thank God that um, Apostle here today, Apostle Remont, before they become Apostle, the relationship don't be. Star National Expo will bring together churches to display their talent in diverse way. He encouraged all gospel musicians, dancers, and poets to enroll for the competition, as this will leverage the platform to showcase their talents. But a lot to entertainment, especially in secular entertainment. One will give back to the church. And I sure see internal life don't be one church we don't benefit from Star TV. Star TV one will give back to the church and which of course an apostle did in charge. That we call our Star Gospel Expo. A program for talented youth, talented Christian people. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Listen, it don't tell where the church did, it makes it. Don't tell where the church wants to do something. If television will give you that kind of platform, they will let the CEO person they perform live on television. Not a big thing, not a wonderful thing. We don't see them, we don't see them. We don't, we don't like to watch this, we see Sarah Idols and all that thing, they are making God talent. And the same to start you want to do for the Christian people. So put your hands together and accept this kind of offer from Star Television. So we don't do them because of Star Television, we do them together with the church. We mean together with the church, we belong together with a group, a body of Christians they call Gospel Promoters Union. During the one year anniversary celebration, various apostles, pastors, and ministers were in attendance with other activities, climaxing the occasion. For well, good news for entertainment lovers. A website for Sierra Leonean songs has been launched by Joshua Muliba, a Sierra Leonean entertainer popularly called Salon Bobo. Let's have more with Creating Thomas. One of Salon's famous bloggers, commonly known as Salon Bobo Tigi, has on Friday, 3rd May 2019, launched its website for Salon music called salonsongs.com. Delivering a statement, the head of entertainment, Media One Center, Ambassador Mohamed Bashir Sanisi, said that Sierra Leone is faced with so many challenges in promoting Sierra Leone music, thus calling the government, which is a must priority to support the creative art industry. Um, in time, time, the current uh, administration take entertainment to a different dimension. That's why usually I say it's creative art industry and uh, they are not doing us a favor. You know, most times I see entertainers, rarely around politicians, I see they are doing us a favor. No, it's enshrined in various laws, like um, the Act Number no. 6 of 1991, you know, Fundamental Principle of State Policy, that's the Article 2. When you read in the page 13 of that document, they said the government must support the creative art and culture and all. And if you read the 2006 African New Charter in Article 13, it speaks about culture and say the sensitivity towards that. And currently, if you read the New Direction Manifesto, page 45, 
the president highlighted music, arts, and performing arts and all. So they are not doing us a favor, it's a must. And uh, moving towards that, we are urging the more companies to see how this way affordable data. Mohamed Bangura, one of selling icon in the entertainment industry, aka Kimi Lan, whilst delivering his keynote address, said that the government have not been doing anything good to the entertainment industry. Thus appealed to the government to reach out to mobile companies to reduce the tariff and thus encourage artists to start doing classic videos and songs. They said a lot, younger brothers speak a lot about the entertainment industry and of course Carlos as well. We are speaking on behalf of the entertainment industry, give a keynote. I'm going to make it short because, of course, time is at issue right now. First of all, I want to thank you so much for coming with a website like this. We've seen a lot of been in the industry for long. I believe you can remember that one time uh, an entertainment uh, website called Salon School Fans. They were, they, they were formed or had organized in England. They came here to do the same thing like this one. They did. Uh, a lot of uh, adverts around, but gradually it went out because of the same thing that was saying about sponsorship and, of course, uh, uh, promotion wise as well. I believe www.com, salon, salonsong.com, definitely make a mark. Put your hands together for this wonderful gesture anyway. Now, the industry definitely. The begin behind the initiative of the launching of the website, Joshua Moiba, aka Salon Bobo Tigi, said that it feels like sailing music is stuck somewhere. They've always like been welcoming my idea. For example, it's like the first time I spoke with banking, I was like, banking, I'm having a project I'm working on, and you know, I want us to like work together as a team and help push the music up. And to be realistic, banking was like, Salon Bobo, trust me, I'm into this. 100% because once it's about serenade music, I'm into it. It might look so so funny in the sense that because first of all, normally people in a library they get problem with me because I do criminal justice in school. Right? So they expect me for doing a, a law department and things. But I choose entertainment because obviously we're having a lot of lapses and things that we need to like. Amen. Okay. So I come up with salonsongs.com to help the industry move forward. And to be realistic, salonsongs.com is not only here to stay, but it is here to take some real music to the world, which I can, I can cross my heart on. Salon Song website is open to every Salinian in and out of the country. Meanwhile, plans are on the way to open an online television of plain sailing non-stop music. For Star News, Creighton Thomas reporting. To round up our news bulletin, let's see what's happening in the sporting world as football stakeholders in the western area will kickstart its annual female championship across the country with 32 teams taking part in the competition. Our sports correspondent, Tilton John, has all the details. Chairman for Female Football Sierra Leone. Um, we have made a lot of approach to government and other um, companies in this country to promote female football. But thank God the government have sent an high to female football and they have given us something. Um, actually, not like 100% on our budget, but they have given us something to kickstart the female football and very soon we're going to start the female football. How many teams will be competing in this competition? Uh, total teams of 30 all over the country. What are some of the criteria of the participating teams? Well, we are looking for constructive female teams, teams uh, with um, 25 players and above, teams with um, proper training ground and um, 
complete executive members so we are looking into all these things before ever we give green light to any team to take part in this competition how important this competition will be this competition will be very much important because we want to link it link it with um the agenda for um wipe wipe off uh, uh, the hands of our girls yeah. from the first lady so with with this um team i believe it will be very much important for uh, all the girls or all the parents and this country because um engaging the girls into different different sporting activities especially football will not lead them to go i mean engage into um man activities so this this alone we uh, make Well, that's all we have for you in a national news bulletin file here on Star TV Channel 21. Thank you very much for watching. I am Leonora Jawara. Continue to stay with us if you can.